Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking your time to attend today's webinar. My name is Romy, and I'm the Product Strategy Manager at IC, looking after our traceability products. Uh, indeed, this is a very exciting time at IC to be showing you these new ENBD features. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, the ENBD website was released back in 2017. And towards the end of 2022, we released the first version of the mobile app. The mobile app has gone through a few iterations where we have rolled out continuous improvements. Previously, um, you would have access to ENVD via your Analyze account. So this access method will remain in place today. The only thing that has changed now is to access ENVD, you will need to log in with your MyMLA account. So um, MyMLA um, single sign-on, basically it's a, it's a tool that we designed to consolidate all of your disparate logins for the various IRC MLA services, including LPA, MSA, MyFeedback, and now ENBD. So there has been a lot of enhancements on the uh, web interface to bring it in line with the mobile app. The features, the enhancements that we have designed are in response to industry feedback to, del to deliver a smoother user experience and improved accessibility for the supply chain. The new features will improve efficiency and convenience for all the users across the supp uh, supply chain. So this will include um, transporters, agents, uh, feedlots, sale yard, and also processors. All of the new features that I will demonstrate today is applicable to the mobile app and also the web. However, it's the website that has gone through most of the significant changes. Now to gain access to EnBD, all you need to do is register with MyMLA, and then you can start linking in your um, uh, NLS account. So I'll just start by sharing my screen. So this is the MLA, MLA um, uh, homepage. So if you wanted to sign up for a MyMLA account, all you need to do is just to click on this button here and you provide your email address, select a password and then um, submit. We will send you a verification code. You come back to this website, click on login and enter your verification code and then you set up your profile. If you've already got your MyMLA account set up, then all you need to do is just to log in to MyMLA. So click on this button. I've got a few test accounts set up already, so I'll just go and log in. This is my processor test account, so I'll just show you as a processor what you expect to see when you log in. So as you arrive on the MLA dashboard, you can see if I scroll down, I've got quick access to all of my MLA services here including LPA, Analyze, ENVD, MSA, my feedback, and Sheep Genetics. If you haven't linked any of your services, all you need to do is just to go over here, click on Link Services, and then click on Link More Services. So if I was to link one of my Analyze accounts, I just click on Analyze. And as you can see, I've already linked a process account to this um, MyMLA login. If I wanted to link a second account, I can do that. Just need to click on link account, link account, and provide my credentials and click on link, and that will link the second account. So I won't link anymore in here. I've got one account. If you also have a, if you're managing a, a LPA account, you can link your LPA accounts by clicking on LPA. I've got one LPA account here already. If I want to add a second one, I just click on this and that will allow me to add a second LPA account. So I won't add anything right now. I'll just jump into the dashboard. And I will jump straight into ENVD. So if I click on ENVD, so that takes me to the ENVD homepage. Now this section, the top section here is new. We have introduced as part of this web alignment project. Um, here we've introduced that account switcher that Marty mentioned. So if you've got multiple accounts linked uh, or you're managing different properties, you can link all of your accounts in here. 
as I showed you, I had one analyze account, that is the process account. I have one LP account, which is that uh, the QCZZ8888 pick over here. And we also give you sort of the buyer and the viewer account. So the buyer and the viewer account are default accounts that we will assign to every EMBD user. So buyer would be, if you ever buying stock from a sale yard, we will give you a buyer account. And viewer basically um, is account that we will give, assign all EMBD users uh, so that they can be added as a, as, a, as a third party to a consignment that they're not linked to. So a processor, uh, sorry, a producer or creator can link you onto a consignment just by adding you as a viewer. So I'll go through that a little bit later. Um, this section here is basically the moving today section. So all of your consignments that are moving today would be highlighted over here. And just to make it easy for you, we've also introduced this sort of a counter here. So any, it will just basically tell you, you've got three consignments that are moving today. So they are coming to your property. And we also summarize this like, um, there's an incoming flag and um, you've got your, um, the livestock, what forms are included, what is the status of the consignment, and we also give you some options, what you can do with that consignment. Um, this bottom section here is something you'd probably be familiar with already. So if you've used the EnVD system before, this is where, what you used to see before. So we just, in, we just enhanced this and added a few more things in here. So we added this, in, this flag here just to tell you it's incoming. We've got uh, the status, we've got everything else here. If you wanted to quickly search for a particular consignment, you can search by the pick, by the name, or serial number, or register. So let's just start searching using a pick QBZZ2222. This is one of our test accounts. So it's highlighted all of the consignment that has to, anything to do with QBZZ2222. If I was to search using a name, so for example, Smith. So now it has highlighted all of those consignment that has to do anything to do with the Smith. If I wanted to search by a radio number of, the, of my transporter, I can just say, type in the radio number, ABC, one, two, three. And all of my consignments with that radio number has been highlighted over there. I can also search by serial number. So if you have a serial number of a consignment uh, of an NVD form, you can type it in and it will um, yeah, pull that out from the list. We also have this filter function. So if you click on filter, we're giving you the ability to search by a uh, filter by the species. So if I just want to look at cattle consignments, all of these are cattle consignments. I can clear the filter. We are also giving you the ability to search by the status of the consignment. So any draft submitted or completed uh, and also within a particular date range. Let me just scroll down. So within a date range. So last week, last month, last quarter or custom date range. We also give you the ability to sort by different methods. So by default, we sort by last updated. You can also sort by the movement date or the created date. So let's just, and maybe another one is this one here. So if you used to, we've introduced this ENVD profile section as well. So if you want to jump into your ENVD profile and you can update, I can click on update. I can update my name, update my phone number. Your email ID is locked to your MyMLA login. We are giving you the ability to also uh, nominate yourselves to be a livestock carrier. So if you're buying stock from a sale yard and you have your own trucks to carry them, you can say you will be transporting your own trucks, I mean your own uh, livestock. So I'll just say, just say that, yeah, say yes to that. Put in your registration uh, vehicle region number and save changes. This email notification, as Marty mentioned, we have introduced um, a feature called email notification. So uh, basically uh, we were here when throughout our 
industry engagement with the processors, we were hearing that they received quite a lot of emails on a daily basis, individual emails on consignment. So what we have done is we have brought in this email notification feature. So we basically consolidate all of your emails, uh, all of your consignments in one email, and we send you one email every day where you can find all of your consignments that are moving to your property today or anything that has been consigned to you in the last 24 hours. So if you didn't want to receive any of that email notification, you can click on this option here and disable that email notification. Uh, even And also, if you've got more than one LPA account, you can select which one which one will be your default uh, LPA account when you log into the system. So I'll just say yes to this and I'll save changes and I'll show you what that does. So I go back here. Now you'll see I've got a transporter card as well. So if I click on this, I don't have any consignments to assigned to me so that's why there's nothing there but if i had any consignments assigned to this isc processor at gmail.com i'll find it in there so i'll just go back to my um, processor account and i will click on one of these consignments this looks like a good one so it's 300 cattle so it's a large consignment let's just open it up This is the, the new ENVD summary page, consignment summary page for the consignment. On a high level, we show you who's the livestock owner. So there you go, A. Smith was the owner. Um, where it's moving from, where it's moving to. So this is your property, it's coming to your property. And what's in this consignment? So there's 300 head of cattle. We also show you what are the forms included? So there's an NBD plus a MSA form. And if I scroll down further, so it just tells me this consignment has been submitted. The creator of the consignment can still change the movement date, livestock description, or the transporter details uh, within 48 hours, uh, after the 48 hours from the movement time and date. So if he's still able to change, any of those if you find that he needs to change anything else like if he's made mistake with answering one of the questions then it's probably best that he deletes the consignment and creates a new one to send it to you so as you as a receiver uh, all you can do is to view um review the con uh, consignment you cannot make any changes apart from adding comments so just to tell you what this is so this this section here, we've broken up the ENVD consignment into different sections. We have a movement section. It's telling me six out of six questions were completed. So it's got a green tick next to it. The next one is the form. So it's answered three, of, three out of three questions. This is helpful because um, throughout our industry engagement with the processors, there were, there were sort of, there was a pain point there that they identified, which was, when they're receiving ENVD consignments, they're not sure if it's fully complete or not. So they're not sure if they can start putting it through the workflows or not. So hearing this feedback from them, we've introduced this, this feature where we show you how complete the consignment is and if all of the mandatory questions are answered or not. So if you, if you look at this section here, it's got a tick next to everything. So I can say for sure this consignment is fully complete. It is safe for the processors to start working on this um, this consignment. They can start putting it through their workflows, organize skills and everything they need to do. As a processor, you can you can just review. So if I just jump, you can jump into any sections if you want. So if I just want to jump into the livestock description, I jump in here. I get to this page here, the livestock page. It's telling me what is included in this consignment. So I've got 150 head of Angus Mixed. Uh, they all have the uh, electronic tag. The brand is the X. Next livestock description is 100 heads of Santa. Uh, and yep, 100 electronic tags, zero Roman tags. And the last one is an Angus, 50 of the Angus, 
brand is A and it's got 50 electronic tags and no Roman tags. So total is 100. If I want to continue reviewing this ENVD, I'll just click on next. Next, I get into the history questions. So there's questions, there are responses to each of those. Uh, I've got that question mark here, probably not so applicable to you guys, but if you wanted to know more about what this question means, you click on the question mark, it shows the explanatory notes. So this is the uh, sort of uh, logic behind answering, uh, give you some ins, uh, so more explanation on that question and how the producer should have answered that. Click on next. Then we get into the food safety questions. So all of these questions are here. Now this is the first place that you'll find if the producer wanted to declare any byproduct stock feed that he has fed his uh, animals, he can upload any of the um, the reports to support that um, the claim that he has made. So if you find one of those, um, he's got some documents attached, you can click on that and it will basically render it on your browser. So anything the producer attaches, you can you can see that it's there. It's never gonna get deleted. It will always stay there for the rest of the consignment's life. Um, there's a second document that has attached. I can click on that. Same deal. So I just it just renders the PDF. I mean the the document on your browser. There's an image that they've attached. It's just some image of some cattle. Then we go to the next page. Some chemical treatment questions. All of those have been answered. Last, I get to the declaration page. I can see the declaration has been fully completed. It's been signed by the producer. This producer's product provided his contact details. And as they included an MSA form, they've uh, the, the system has also put in the MSA registration number for that producer. The MSA registration number of the owner was not different, so it hasn't been provided. And again here, this section here will allow the pro, uh, producer to attach any of the permits, like a cattle uh, tick declaration or any other permit that they wanted to submit. Same thing, so if you click on that, you can open up the, the attached file. So if I close that, so there's an image as well uploaded of a livestock weigh just a sample. And just gives you a bit more information about the MSA um, registration. Uh, producer has put in some additional information, antibiotic free. And then we get into the transport page. So now you can also see the transporter has done their job. So transporter has completed this consignment on the device or on the computer because they've got access to login through computer as well. Um, so yeah, he's signed the declaration. He's provided, completed his section. There's a second transporter as well who has done the same. Now if I just go back to the summary page. So that completes the consignment review. If I wanted to generate a PDF, so I just want to see how this information captured digitally will look on the paper form. And just click on generate PDF. And that will show me how it looks on a paper form. So I've got all of the questions have been answered. All of the information has been rendered on this, in this form. I scroll down. I can see on the next page, there were some attachments that the producer has attached. There are some byproduct stock feed that producer declared. And then we have the transporter details. So we can see the transporters had signed it, uh, the original number, what time they signed it. And the second produce, uh, second transporter has also signed it. And then if I continue scrolling down, the MSA form is also populated. And now all of these ones are the attachments that the producer included in the consignment. So there was few forms that I showed you, there was a commodity vendor declaration, there was um, there was an image of that, there was attached as well, there's a tick permit that we attached, 
and there was that sample form of the way bill so that that's that and then if you wanted to share this consignment within anyone in the business all you need to do is I'll just go back up all you need to do is just to tap on the share button so basically it will give you a link to the uh, to this document you click on this it's copied the url you jump on your email start a new email paste that link and send it off to anyone in the business who would like to get access to this document so let me just close this and go back to the summary screen so we've done that now comments so comments is another new feature um through our industry engagement we've heard from the supply chain that there has to be a tool that allows different parties to talk to each other so um, this is to basically replace the note taking that used to happen on paper so we can see here heritage dairy farm who was the vendor who started this consignment he left a comment after submitting he said the animals were left in the southern yard and uh, and then he's editing the receiver the agent the transporter and a few viewers so you may ask who are viewers i'll i'll explain it to you a little bit later so he's left a comment he's edited the transporter transporter's got access to this consignment he saw that there were 300 head getting moved one truck is not enough so he said yeah See, great see you in the morning need two trucks so he's added bob so bob was added by this transporter as a second transporter now mla processor head office was one of the viewers so they asked did you want me to find any buyers so if i if i scroll back up here a list of all the viewers that have been added to this consignment so you as a processor if you want if you've got a head office that likes to see all of the consignment you can ask the producer to always add the processor head office as the viewer so they get visibility of this consignment the producers also added um, williamson rural marketing maybe they are the um, the accountant for this uh, producer so it's added them as a viewer and the producers also added uh, some of the buyers or the agent could have added some of the buyers so uh, happy happy hooves healthy heads is a buyer Pastures Pride is another buyer. So two buyers have been added. So they get, get visibility to this consignment as well. So I'll go back to my comments. So yes, the processor head office was asking, did you want me to find any buyers? Uh, Jason Bourne, who was an agent added to this consignment, said buyers have already been assigned. So he's added two buyers in there. Then Gentle Giant Carriers, um, Bob here, see you in the morning. So he's the second transporter. is also leaving a comment. Then Williamson Rural Marketing saying thanks for the updates because he's, he's been updated on what's happening on this consignment. Now you yourself as a um, processor, you can also leave a comment. So you were expecting 300, but say for the example, these animals arrived and he found there was only 290. So I will say expecting 300, but we received only 290 head oops sorry head so once you leave a comment it cannot be edited or deleted and you've got a character limitation of 256 so uh, it has to be with less than that so you can like like multiple comments if you want it doesn't there's no nothing stopping you so yeah once you leave this comment everyone linked to this consignment will be able to see it like you so you can see comments left by different parties so if i submit this so north city meets which is myself as a receiver he's left a comment um, and everyone linked to this consignment including these viewers they will all be able to see that so expecting 300 uh, and you receive only 290 so that's the comments feature viewers is another feature that we've introduced as part of the web alignment so basically by introducing this feature we are allowing any third party to be 
uh, linked to this consignment via the registered MyMLA email ID. So all of these email IDs, they need to register with MyMLA and then click on ENVD. So that will set up as an ENVD profile. And that way we can start assigning consignment to these parties. So you can add the process ahead of this. You can add your accountant. Uh, you can add any agents who don't have a PIC. So for example, in Queensland and NT, they are agents who don't have PIC. So you can't add them via the PIC. So you add them as a viewer. You can also add some buyers. So if you, you, you have, your agent could add some buyers in there. So yeah, this is the viewer um, feature. Now, yeah, you have some consignment options as well. So you can generate PDF or you can leave a comment. And this basically on a high level just shows you all of the high level information, including the movement time and date. Um, so that sort of finishes everything that I want to show on the app, uh, sorry, on the web for you. I'll jump on the mobile app and I will show how this works on the app. So share screen from my mobile phone. And just a reminder, if anyone had any questions about what Romy has just um, presented, by all means, put that in the Q and A, and we will we will work through those questions for you. Thanks, yeah. Romy. Thank you, Marty. So, as I open this app, uh, I need to log in. So, I'll just click on the accept uh, terms privacy policy in terms of use, and I click on start. I log in. So as I log in, I've got two options. So I can log in as a guest user, but I won't recommend using that because that just gives you very limited functionality. Basically, you're able to log in as a guest and use the QR code scanning functionality to get hold of the consignment on your phone. So you log in as a MyMLA user, so you get full benefit of the system. So log in. And let me find my account that I want to log in with. And you can see I've got a few accounts here, so I'll just select the right one. So this is the same account I logged in on the computer. So as I log in onto the app, it's just looking for any, it's doing a sync, uh, syncing with the backend. So looking for any changes that might have happened offline or anything that has changed on the uh, ENVD system. So it's downloading all of the updates on the phone. So again, over here on the app, on the top here, I've got my different accounts. I've got an LPA account. I've got a process, analyze process account. This transporter account, we, we added the transporter account on the web. So it's here as well. Um, buyer account, the view account. So if I just go back into the process account, this middle section here will highlight all of my consignments that are moving today. And then if I was to see all of my consignments, I just tap on the view button. It shows all of my consignments. So let me just open up the consignment we were looking at on the web, which is this one on the right on the top. So the 300 head cattle. So if I open that up, I can see these same. There's a summary page of the consignment. I can see all of these sections are completed. They've got a neck, uh, tick next to it. I can see what are the forms included, what are the brands, how many livestock. Um, the declaration page has been signed. The transporters have signed their part. I can see who are the viewers. So if I click on that, I can see who are the viewers for this consignment. And if I wanted to edit, uh, just go into the consignment review, just tap on view. And basically it will allow me to step through the different pages, check all of that information. 
I'm not able to edit anything because I'm not the consignment creator, but I can review all of this information that was provided. So I just keep on tapping through next. My all of my questions are there. The attachments are there. And tap on next. Then I get into the livestock description. All of the livestock description is there. 150 Angus mixed. Second description was 100, 100 Santa steers. And then there was 50 Angus steers. So all of that information is there. I click on next. There was a couple of permits uploaded by the producer. So they are there as well. I click on next. Producer also declared that these are antibiotic free. Get to the final summary page. So, yep. Yeah. I'm happy with all of that. So, yep. Yeah. So, and then exit form. So, there's also the comments feature available. So, if I just tap on comments. So, on the top there, there's a summary page. Click on comments. It just gives me a commentary of all the uh, activity that's happened. So the vendor has left a comment. Um, the transporter has left a comment. The MLA head office, processor head office has left a comment. Agent has left a comment. And then the last comment there is yourself. Uh, as a processor, you left a comment. I can also comment from my mobile app. I'll just say, I'll testing, uh, I'll just say test comment from app. And I'll just add that. So you can see that uh, you're also able to leave a comment from the mobile app. So um, I think that's, uh, you can also search for any consignment, same as on the mobile app, you can search for consignment. You can sort and filter consignments on the mobile app. So just tap on, tap on that button there on the top. Uh, the filter button, it just brings up, you can sort by movement date, last updated, created date, by certain species, status of the consignment, or the movement date. So I'll just close that. I think that's the, that's all that I wanted to show you from the mobile app. So if we went back to the um, the yeah, so this last slide here is the email notification. So there's through our industry engagement, as I mentioned earlier, we were hearing a lot from the processes that they are receiving so many emails on a daily basis. Basically, single consignments coming to their property. Um, and what we have done is we've sort of introduced this email notification thing. So we will consolidate all of your consignments in one email and send it to you at 3 a.m. Sydney time. So all of the consignments that are moving today would be highlighted on the top section there. So in the so this email is from the 12th of March. So you can see it says on the 12th of March, all of these consignments are due to arrive. So if you were to click in any of those underline the blue underline consignment number, it will basically render the, the PDF version that I showed you. Uh, and then the bottom section here is any of the consignments that I have been consigned to in the previous 24 hours. So same thing. These are not moving today, but these, these are new consignments that have been added as a receiver. So you can see there are different movement dates. So some of them were 13th of March, some were 11th of March. They're all different dates. But these are everything that I have been consigned to in the previous 24 hours. So this is basically another feature um, that will help you um, uh, with your workflows. Uh, you can stay on top of all the consignments that are coming your way. Um, and yeah, we hope you enjoy this feature. I think that's that's all that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you, Marie.